Hello and welcome to the next lesson in our Git Essentials course. In the previous video, we have pushed our repository to a Git server. We used GitHub for this and this allows us now a bunch of new possibilities to work with this repository. Imagine that you just change your development machine or that uh, multiple colleagues of you uh, start to work with your repository, then of course you need a Git server for this. And what we now want to try to do is just to download this, a copy of this repository to our machine, just to see how we can uh, access other repositories that are hosted on a Git server. And then we will also push a change from the second repository to, to GitHub. And then we will download this change set to our original repository that we have worked with in the previous videos. So let's start and go to our terminals. As you can see, I have prepared a small window setup, putting the uh, existing repository we have worked with before on the left side, and then I also opened up a new uh, a terminal on the right side. And we want to use the right terminal right now to clone this repository, so this is kind of initialization. If you're interested in a project or repository, then you can simply download the whole repository if you have the access rights to it. Uh, and since we are the owner of the repository, we shall not have any problem with it. To download a repository, you need the command git clone. And git clone expects that you simply pass the URL of the repository. I pasted this in here right now. You can get the URL from the main page of your GitHub repository at github.com, obviously. And if you run this command, this will create a new directory with the name of your repository and then uh, all the stuff of your repository is stored in that repository. So obviously when I start this command, uh, it will fail since we already, we already have a directory called new repository. And if you have such a situation, you can simply pass a second parameter with an alternative name Obviously, I changed up my <laughs> my keyboard settings, so I'm used to use the English keyboard, and but now I accidentally switched to the German <laughs> uh, uh, keyboard. Very sorry for for uh, this interruption. And if you provide the second uh, repository, you now see that uh, a new directory is created uh, called new repository two. And then Git starts to download all the repository files for you. Then you simply can, oh sorry, uh, change into your directory. And as you can see, you have already checked out uh, the master branch. You also can do the uh, lock uh, command and you will see that you now have the complete the same history as you uh, are used to in the on the left side. So this is completely the same. And I will just bring up the lock here as well. And you see it's quite the same. We did not push the feature slash a branch yet and that's why you do not have uh, access to it on the right side uh, of your repository. But what you also can see is that you now have some new branches, uh, right? There is something called origin slash master and origin slash head. And uh, this, these are the remote tracking branches. And master and origin master uh, belong to each other or has a relationship, if you like. And if you uh, now just... Uh, push a new, a new change to the server and then you will uh, download them here on the left side uh, of the other repository, in the other repository, uh, Git will automatically know, ah, okay, the master branch belongs to the origin slash master branch and then it will look for changes uh, in, the origin, uh, in the origin branch. So as promised, uh, we want to uh, do some changes to our repository and push them. And I will do this here in our original 
our repository, I just open up the Rim editor once more and do a small change to our 8.txt file. And I simply add some uh, strange various content to this file. And then I escape the uh, insertion mode, hit colon, colon WQ and exit the Rim editor. Then I have to simply do the commit. Remember we have the shortcut I git commit minus minus all, uh, minus m, and then I simply say um, a.txt some updates. And if we now have a look on the lock, you will see that our local master branch is ahead of the origin master branch. So these are out of, the, out of sync. And uh, to just be able to update the origin master branch, we now have to push again uh, our master branch. And to do this, you can simply uh, say git push. And git push will automatically uh, take the current branch that you are on, the master branch, and push the new contents to the server. As you can see, this uh, looks quite nice. And if we now have a look at our lock once more, so just to remember you, if I type this reverse I search to look for uh, commands that I have used in the past, just use the uh, Control R uh, shortcut on your keyboard, and that uh, this will bring up uh, the the search for you. And uh, if we now bring up the log egg once more, you can see that our origin master is back in sync with our local master branch again. And now the cool thing happens on our other repository here on the right side, we are now able to uh, download all of these uh, changes as well. So there is um, uh, one command that you can use to simply uh, to simply download changes uh, that do not affect your local branch yet. You can simply say git fetch and git fetch will download all the changes from your git server. If you now have a look at your log, you will see that uh, your local master branch is uh, not in sync uh, with the origin master. The, the origin master now is one commit ahead. This is uh, quite logical, right? So we just downloaded the changes, but we did not uh, integrated the master branch uh, to the origin slash master branch. Um, to do this, you can, for example, do the following. You can just say git merge origin slash master. And this will do a fast forward merge. Uh, we are already familiar with this. And once more, uh, logging everything out, we'll say that we are now have the same uh, master uh, status in both repositories. So you see to download and to integrate a change from the server, there are two commands needed. First, the git fetch command, and second, the git merge command. And there is also a shorthand to, to those two commands. Um, to show you this, I just will bring up another change in our left repository. I will I go to the Wim editor once more. And now I just decide to get rid of the strange content. <laughs> and I also do this. And now I say, I just go through my history, bring up my git commit command once more, and I just say a.txt refine content. And now I say git push again. So this uploads the changes to the git server. And as this has finished, we can go back into our uh, into our second repository and instead of git fetch and git merge, we can write the command git pull. And git pull will automatically uh, grab the changes from the server, download them and will 
automatically update your your local tracking branch with the remote tracking branch. So it's like that you do a git fetch and git merge both together. And as you can see, this has worked perfectly. We have downloaded the content from the server and automatically a merge was done for us. And if we now, for a very last time, uh, hit our lock, you will see that the uh, local branch and the origin branch are uh, synchronized uh, once more. So this is a quick introduction how you can push and pull uh, your changes and in the next video we will see what happens if we have some conflicts going on if we grab some content from the Git server. So stay tuned and we see us in the next video. By the way, if you still have any question about the video or if you have any further question, please do not hesitate to ask me and leave me a comment below. Thank you.